North Korean troops clashed with Ukrainian troops in the Kursk region. This most likely occurred in an attempt to probe the Ukrainian defense line in the region, the New York Times reports. It is noted that this battle in the Kursk region was limited and not large-scale. The information about the clash between the Ukrainian and North Korean military was confirmed to the American press by a senior U.S. official and a Ukrainian official on condition of anonymity. The Ukrainian official told the New York Times that the clash was likely intended to test the Ukrainian line of weaknesses. The Ukrainian official added that the DPRK soldiers were fighting alongside Russia's 810th Separate Marine Brigade. However, it was not specified when exactly the battle took place. The U.S. official told the New York Times that a significant number of North Korean troops were killed in the clash. Ukraine's leader Volodymyr Zelensky, who had earlier condemned the West's lack of response to the North Korean troops, said these first battles with North Korea open a new chapter of instability in the world. Ukraine says an estimated 11,000 North Korean soldiers were in the Kursk border region where Ukrainian troops have a foothold. In recent weeks, South Korean and U.S. intelligence as well as NATO have said that they have seen evidence of North Korean troops being involved in Russia's war. In an interview with South Korean broadcaster KBS, Rustem Umarov confirmed this, saying he expects a significant number of the North Korean troops to be engaged in combat, though he added it was, so far, just small contacts, not full-scale engagement. Most of them are still undergoing training, he added. They're wearing Russian uniforms, they're undergoing tactical training, and they're being deployed under various commands of the Russian army on the front lines, Umarov said. Reports of such a move by North Korea have also alarmed the South, raising tensions between the two sides. It pledges that Russia and North Korea will help each other in the event of aggression against either country. In the light of the strike on Kaspisk, Russia needs to understand the capabilities of Ukrainian drones. Drones can target not only ships, but airborne targets as well, says military expert and retired Ukrainian Armed Forces Major Oleksiy Hetman in a comment to RBC Ukraine. This indicates that we have drones capable of reaching that distance. We've known this before. They have already reached targets. Now the enemy should understand that there isn't a single city in Russia that we can't reach the expert said. He added that while Ukraine can currently reach deep targets within Russia with drones, these drones cannot carry large amounts of explosives. This is important for causing significant destruction. Hetman recalled that the Caspian Sea is a launch site for missiles from Tu-95MS aircraft. Therefore, the Russians should understand the potential threat. I think the Russians are starting to realize that drones can attack not only ships, but potentially airborne targets as well. Our drones are already attacking Russian drones. And I think if a drone is controlled externally rather than by an internal inertial program, it can potentially be guided to hit a bomber. This is an assumption, the expert stated. He emphasized that he was not asserting the existence of such technology, but did not rule out that if drones can reach and strike targets on water or land, they might also hit airborne targets. It may not be as powerful a means of air defense as our Patriot or other complexes we use, but it would be desirable to assume so, Hetman added. For the first time, drones from the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine's Ministry of Defense attacked an enemy flotilla in the Caspian Sea. This flotilla had participated in shelling Ukraine and the 177th Naval Infantry Regiment was involved in combat in the Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. The distance from the target in the city of Kaspisk, Republic of Dagestan, Russia, to Ukraine's border was approximately 1,500 kilometers. According to RBC Ukraine sources, missile ships Tatarstan and Dagestan, as well as small missile ships of Project 21631, may have been damaged. If Putin announces mobilization, it could end badly for him. But even without it, the Russian army will not last long. 
Oleg Zdanov believes. Oleg Zdanov's opinion can be found in the video on the YouTube channel. An officer of the Ukrainian Armed Forces described the economic situation in Russia as a sign of the crisis approaching in Russia. One can name the fact that the largest construction company, Samolet, went bankrupt in the Russian Federation. This indicates that the economy can start to fall at any moment, so I do not think that Russia has any prospects. I don't think Putin plans to announce mobilization in the near future. Why is Putin so stubborn? Because for him, it would be a death sentence. It would cause such a social explosion if a wave of mobilization were to be announced now against the backdrop of the economic decline that is taking place in the Russian Federation. Oleg Zdanov explained. After this, the military expert added, on the other hand, if Putin does not declare it, then the generals can no longer guarantee success on the front line. As an example, I can cite the Kursk region. Belisov promised Putin, although they say it was under pressure, that they would be able to liberate the Kursk region before the new year. And today, news comes from the swamps that the new deadlines are March or April. At present, Russia is likely to keep banking on various coercion tactics to bolster its military manpower in Ukraine, Experts say a strategy that has proven effective at ensuring a continuous supply of fresh recruits to the front lines. In fact, though the Defense Ministry said it had met its stated quota in the fall of 2022 mobilization, the mobilization process itself has never ended, said lawyer Alexei Tabalov, the head of conscripts' rights NGO Shkola Prizivnika. If we define mobilization strictly according to the law, then it means conscription of citizens listed in reserve for military service. But in a wider sense, mobilization is simply the recruitment of soldiers for the front lines. Tabalov explained, when the Kremlin first announced the September 22 partial mobilization, officials didn't think about the consequences and went head first, Tabalov told the Moscow Times. Now, after facing the public backlash, the resistance and the resentment, the authorities are acting in a more skillful and calculated way, sending to the front line those who want it and those who can't refuse.